speak of, just speak a little bit more about that. you you were reaching out for like 13 months you said bro it, it really takes like that sometimes if you really want to get in somewhere you got to yeah. be annoying <laughs> no you're dude you're right and i i remember sophomore year of college i I, it was a similar way when I worked at Downtown Recording, you know, that recording studio studio here. And yep. it took me I forever to get in there. You know, it's like you got to you got to just grind and grind and grind. And but there's a certain persistence that you show when you do that. Right. And oh, yeah. it basically says that I'm willing to be annoying as fuck to work here. Like I'm, I'm willing to knock on your door every day to work here. And that's the type of employee people want, you know, so I'm, I'm totally willing to do that. I got over getting being annoying years ago, <laughs> so I I know you're a similar way because you're in a cutthroat industry, dude. So you just gotta be, you gotta be just resilient. Shoes, yeah, shoes, man. Handcraft in Italy, bro. Le, uh, it's called uh, Le, Le Marcia, Italy. Um, it's the Shoe Valley. It's where Gucci is, Prada, Fendi, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Now, how'd you come way. across that connection there? Uh, I just research, bro. Just research, man. I, I, Shout I don't out to really that. Like, think too much about that, but dude, anything's possible, bro. Anything is possible. I mm -hmm. mean, just just finding the right people and making the right connections, man. And yes, when you're sir. there. You know what I mean? And just send that message. Send don't that message. Hey, the least they'll say is no, man. Exactly. That's those. That's huge, gems, man. That that's really impressive, bro. Those shoes are dope. You got a, you got your own shoe, man. Yeah, man. That's yeah. uh. Have you, have you, it reminds me, there's a new song out that, uh, Lupe Fiasco did with, uh, Virgil Ablo and, or Ablo, and I, I think it's Erica Badu or something like that, but it's called, it's called Shoes, and he features Virgil talking, or like presenting this new shoe design to, right. I guess, his company or whatever. But the way that he's explaining it, you really just have to listen to it. It it's like, yeah. and, and then Lupe ties into what he's saying and relates like shoes to his like growing up and like what what shoes mean to him. It's right. really 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 cool. I when it, it came out a, about a month ago or so. Yeah, but, that sneaker culture is real, bro. Sneaker culture is huge, yeah. especially in Louisville, bro. Huge in Louisville. I mean, if you type in Louisville Sneaker on Facebook, Instagram, anything like that, bro, hella different pages will pop up. I'm involved a lot uh, in sneaker communities in Louisville. So, um, yeah, bro, it's going to be dope, man. You're going to see these on the shelves very, very soon. Oh, They're that's on the website awesome, bro. Right Congratulations, now. dude. Seriously, that's awesome. So, yeah. We went through, said okay. Everything <laughs> went through. Yeah. Uh, we was on episode five, um, Bodak Yellow of uh, season two of Tell. So we end up landing two placements on BT um, 2019. Uh, and wow. it, 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 it still blows me away. Um, I still yeah, got bro. episodes on my DVR, like, you know, and I watch them like to give me like that motivation when I be feeling down some days. I just, yeah, be, yeah I, I was going to say. put that on and just like really have to like be like, man, you know, like. You started in 2018, and here you are in 2019, and you're on BT. Yeah, that, that's because you, we, me, and you talked the other day too when you were telling me the story, and then you were also saying it was like you know because one minute you were down, and then the next minute you know you've got this Irv Gotti, you know, record producer executive, you know, saying he likes your music, and now all of a sudden you've got a you've got a placement on a, a BET series. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Two. Two placements. two placements and like you just said you keep them recorded on your dvr bro and you watch them for motivation because you you know you never know when you'll need that but that's yeah. amazing dude so are you are those placements are you getting paid for that those placements i am, I am. Oh, man <laughs> i bet so that's it, nice it, and, and to be able to now like see that like man all the all the hard work that we put in all the time and all the hard work that we put in to everything to now be reaping like benefits off of it is kind of like mind-blowing mind blowing yeah dude i bet so i don't have to i don't have to work like it, that's amazing I, it's it's and, and music has 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 been the reason so talk about a little bit you know you just mentioned it a minute a minute ago the your gospel album your gospel projects what's uh what has that experience been like for you it's 
experience was, you know, it was early 2018, man. I was just trying to, I was doing a lot of silly, beautiful things, man. I wasn't listening, man. I was going through a lot. So I said, I want to find a way out of this to help myself connect positive to the world, to what's going around, so I don't be so fucking deep into this dark area, you know what I mean? So yeah. I ran in with a couple of biblical groups on college campuses at U of L. Shout out them man, you man. I ain't been around y'all in a while, but you know, things happen. I still got love for y'all. Shout out to all them, Evan, both Evans up there, man. They helped me get straight to the path I need to be. I got baptized a few times that year. And also, shout out to Heavenly Outpours out there in Frankfurt. BG, shout out to you, man. Look, it's been a minute. Shout out uh, Meech up there, him, him and Miss Tennis, you know. They helped me out too, man. A lot of shout outs along the way. Shout out Patrice too, you know, I'm tripping. It's all coming. Yeah, man. Just, you know, because, you know, you see a lot of rappers on the versatile switch, too, with the positivity. Like, did you hear about NLE Chopper, his recent update? Uh-uh. What happened? With, he's talking about, like, he don't rap about violence no more. He's got, like, the positivity. Because, like, you know, at some point, everybody in the world got to be influenced by you at some point. Right. You know, and when you influence a lot of people, they can be influenced to do whatever yes, you feel that they are leaving you doing. If you leave people to just go out there and be sent, and shit when it's all this real stuff going on and we trying to make a change how can you make a change and then promote senseless you know that's why we saying we just trying to make a change with our voices more so we even if we got a change on a positive level and that bike goes we probably going to start the shit you know because yeah. you know all we doing is totally, you know elevate right yeah exactly man that's a good point it, there's a lot of um well there needs to be a lot of change and a lot of music for real you know people just glorifying violence and you know different difference i mean literally what you just said there's difference uh you know the positivity uh bringing a positive energy and talking about positive things to the table it's so it's so funny like tia fuller like her whole thing is about the little things in the performance that make it great she calls it the minutia like it's the little things that matter right and she is so so think about her because she spent years watching beyonce who's a performer at the tippy top right mm -hmm. and she expects the most and she gives the most and she's on she's on point with everything that she does so tia would come in our ensemble and remember she plays saxophone so she's like she's hearing us work out a little line in a horn section she's like okay tenor sax you're a little flat on this one note like you guys got to lock your articulations more that's a very musical approach right then she would see the lead singers doing their dancing and she would say you, your one little movement, your all's heels are not coming up at the same height during your two step. So she was that, that she was able to like look that deeply at the performance That's and see it. every little inconsistency, whether it be musically, visually, it was, it was a crazy experience. So I got a whole year with her in that context. And then I also had her for uh, six months in like a, like a big band context. And both of those things, it was just, I learned so much. So I'm super thankful for her and everything that she taught me. So uh, that's the, the input, the, especially if you can have, I mean, at least one person, but a whole group that is able to give you creative feedback, like, but it, it's somebody that'll tell you, like, if it's not good, they're going to tell you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like, like but if it is, definitely. of course, you know, but that, that is important, especially as an artist, bro, you got to have that that yeah you definitely yeah, you definitely don't want nobody to tell you to keep going down the dark you know not a dark path but mm -hmm. if there's something else you could do to make something better you definitely want to know <laughs> right that way. when i was younger of course i always loved rap music it's a huge influence in me everything i do hip-hop rap trap all of it i love it and i we always like freestyle rapping you know what i'm saying like that was like hard to do bro it is hard to rhyme in time like especially when you're playing a beat like rhyming like without a beat it's a little bit easier but when you got a beat and it's forcing you to stay in time mm -hmm. and you got a next syllable and the next phrase and the think of the next yeah. word i'm with exactly that so intriguing to me and then once i figured out that jazz is exactly that but with phrase notes. and the thing of the next that blew my fucking mind because my whole perspective of music back then was reading notes off the page learning your scales playing in tune being you know just johnny on the spot at rehearsal right. i had no idea that people could freestyle on a saxophone right and he like, bro i already played the saxophone like what the fuck teach me how to do this shit mm -hmm. so then going to you know jamie's uh jamie ebersall camps and like learning how to do jazz like what do you do and then you know 
life's fucking been crazy ever since then because it just <laughs> that's a great a great uh uh comparison you know improvisation and jazz and then freestyle rapping because you're right it's all the, you know you've got your vocabulary your language with you know with yeah. jazz improvising and you've got language in rap obviously because you're talking you know it's that's a great that's a great uh comparison i like that you yeah just to that? just to add um you know there is like I don't know, this exists in pedagogy, I believe, in general, just teaching music. Mm -hmm. uh, this idea that Western classical music is the only way to gain facility on an instrument. Uh, and that's not necessarily an inherently bad thing to learn classical first. In fact, I'm very thankful that I learned classical music first. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, it gave me the facilities to do what I, what I can do now. But with that being said, uh, in the school systems, there's just not as much funding allocated yeah. towards jazz programs. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly because it's not just that teachers are out to get jazz students, you know, or it's the devil's music. That's long gone. Now oh, it's- Give me a that, break. Yeah. Like I said, Kevin, that it is a language, just like freestyling and stuff like that. So you have these things in your head uh, that you know work over particular chord changes and stuff like that. And so the first part, you know, is just plugging those in. And if you don't know anything, like if you don't have any vocabulary, that's yeah. when you go to the records and you transcribe. Yeah. So those okay. are the yeah. two most important steps, I would say, is number one, finding stuff that you think sounds good, copying it almost exactly to a T, and then using that in your own improvisation. Yeah. 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 So, so what, when you... I don't know. Do you kind of tell, okay, when writing a play, what are some of the biggest thing, like, what is the number one thing you would think about? Like when you sit down and you're like, all right, I'm gonna write this play. Would you say like, is it the cat who you're going to cat? Well, I guess that's not the casting would be more the director, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't really, I don't really write with certain people at mine. I yeah, just okay. sort of, okay. I, I think a lot about music. I mean, all of my plays have music in them. And um, music is sort of where I start, and huh. I don't, um, I sort of allow myself to work from the subconscious and work from impulse, and I don't um, set out to write, I don't say like, okay, I'm going to write about this, this, and this. I sort of allow, I read a lot, I read a lot of writers that um, I find really exciting um, and inspiring, and um you know, I'll read for a while and then just sort of start writing right after I finish reading um, huh. and sort of work from there. So I read a lot of um, poetry, a lot of um, novels, um, and I read a lot of Toni Morrison. So, you know, I just sort of read for a while and I think taking, using other people's work as a sort of jumping off point or just trying to put your headspace in somewhere else besides yourself and what am I going to write putting right. pressure on yourself allows me to sort of like not um to sort of be freer in what I'm doing a little bit I think um yeah and that was I mean that was sort of that was sort of taught to me by a woman named Sybil Kenson I was a professor at Sarah Lawrence and we had to write our own syllabi for each other like we had to write our own like total syllabus for the semester and um what we wanted to read and free associate from so that's huh. sort of where i learned that i for a long time um actually this is still true i really look at um design as like the way that we create the future if that makes sense nice. like i'm a huge sci-fi girl like love nice. like dystopian utopian any single sci-fi that you can throw at me and i feel like design um has a really like rich history in sci-fi like look at hg wells like invent most sci-fi authors are like really inventors and i kind of like want to um i like really have spent a lot of time in the last few months trying to like imagine what i want the future to look like in order to like better guide 
what projects I work on and like what um at least like what personal projects I work on like where I want to put my energy post grad um yeah and that like is really what guides it for me so like kind of um I mean I'm a huge like um Like I really want, I'm interested in like a lot of different avenues with that. I guess like, yeah, like sustainability, of course. And, um, but also like alternate economies and um, like post um, capitalism and, um, oh, wow. and like digital fabrication, like what the future of um, these tools that are like getting better and better every day can be um but also like making like where's the space for making things by hand so there's like a lot there like i get really theoretical with like why i um why i want to make things yeah. and what i want to make so kind of so that since you know that kind of break it down for us what's the difference between an engineer and a producer the engineer typically tries to fulfill the the sonic qualities and like the sonic goals of what the producer wants out of the song. Mm -hmm. and obviously make sure it's mixed and sounds good. And I, right. I think the producer really works more with the artist in the sense that they're trying to help them elevate their song mm -hmm. and help it either reach a broader audience or like tap into like a deeper creative mindset with it. Yeah, so they kind of like they're like the director in a sense. I yeah. guess you could say they direct the record. 